So what does a deep teeth cleaning look like? How much does a tooth cleaning cost? And why do we have so many different dental cleaning tools? I'm gonna answer the top 10 questions you might have before your next tooth cleaning appointment. So what is the difference between a regular cleaning and a deep clean? A routine cleaning is typically done for patients with great oral hygiene and no gum disease. With some very special tools, we're able to remove the plaque, tartar, buildup that's above the gum line. The question then becomes, do you need a routine cleaning or do you need a deep cleaning? So the type of cleaning that's gonna be recommended for you is based off a variety of factors. It's gonna be based off of what we see on the dental x-rays, what we see visually in the mouth with our loops on. And it's also gonna be based on a variety of measurements we take around the gums of the teeth. So for the x-rays, we're basically looking to see if we can identify any buildup on the x-ray, which is a sign that you might have gum disease. Also with the x-ray, we can identify if there's any bone loss around the teeth, if you have any vertical or horizontal bone defects, or if there's any other disease process associated with your teeth. Now with the visual examination, we're looking to see the color and the stimulus around the gums. If it's a light pink color, then obviously that's a sign of healthy gums. If it's a dark red color or sometimes even a purple color, that's a sign of severe inflammation. We can also visualize the calculus, which will typically look yellow. That's that mineralized deposit that's stuck on the tooth. And finally, with our measurements, we can identify if there are any deep pockets around the gums. Typically, we like measurements of two to three millimeters, and that's a sign that your gums are healthy. But sometimes we can get measurements of five or six, which is a sign of inflammation. These measurements are technically called probing depths and they can go upwards of 12 millimeters if you have a fractured tooth or if you have severe periodontal disease. So then you might be wondering at what point do we as dentists recommend a deep cleaning? Well, if we see that the gums are red, puffy, inflamed, if we see that our measurements are closer to five to six millimeters, if we see clinically that you have all this build up around your gums, that's typically gonna direct me towards recommending a deep cleaning over a regular cleaning. And the main difference is that since your gums are severely inflamed, we have to remove all that buildup from above and below the gum line. And when you have that type of inflammation, your gums are sensitive, your teeth are sensitive. And typically we need to give you some sort of anesthesia or medicine to get you numbed up and to do the cleaning properly. And the other main difference between a deep cleaning and a regular cleaning is that after you get your deep cleanings done, you have to be on a maintenance program where you come every three or four months to make sure that your gums continue to be healthy because you're at a higher risk for getting that buildup and getting gum disease again. Number two, what are the different teeth cleaning tools and how do we use them? Well, the first major tool is called the ultrasonic scaler, which is basically an instrument that vibrates and shoots water out. The vibrations of the tip allow us to break off those hard mineralized deposits stuck on your teeth, and it's great for removing staining, and it can be used above and below the gum line. Now, another tool that we use during our cleaning appointments is called a dental scaler. These dental scalers are metal instruments that are typically used after using the ultrasonic scale. And with your hand and a little bit of leverage, you can pop off that calculus under the gums and make sure the tooth is glassy smooth. And the last tool we need to talk about is called the Profi Cup. The Profi Cup is typically used with Profi Paste. It's used to polish your teeth. Typically, it's a sign that the dental appointment is done or complete. And it gets that last remaining plaque off the teeth, makes everything feel really smooth and really clean. Number three, how do we manage sensitive teeth Teeth during your dental cleaning appointment. So some of the common reasons that you might be experiencing sensitivity during your dental cleaning appointments is if number one, you have gum recession where you're exposing your dentin or second layer of the tooth. Number two is if you have worn teeth from acidity or grinding habits and that can cause sensitivity. And number three is if you have really bad gum inflammation or maybe not so good oral hygiene. So if you have sensitive teeth, I typically recommend that you use some type of desensitizing toothpaste. One of my 
my favorite toothpaste to use is called Sensodyne Rapid Relief. I'm not sponsored by the company, but this is what I actively recommend to my patients. And this is gonna help make your teeth more resilient to any pain you might experience when they're scraping off that buildup from your teeth. So one of the things that we can do as dentists when you come to your dental cleaning appointment is we can give you a numbing mouth rinse or a topical gel that we place on your gums to help with that sensitivity. And the final thing that we can do is obviously if you're very sensitive, we can give you an injection with lidocaine, which is a very common medicine we use to numb up teeth for cavities and things like that. But we also do it when we do our dental cleanings because it can numb up the gums, it will numb up the tooth. Typically, this is reserved for a deep cleaning appointment, but there are times where we're doing a routine cleaning where there might be a spot here or there that we have to give that medicine. The final thing I would mention is that the more you do at home, meaning the more you brush, the more you floss, the more you take care of your gums, the easier the dental appointment is gonna be. Basically, you're toughening up your gums so that you're not gonna be too sensitive when the doctor or hygienist cleans your teeth. Number four. What about teeth cleanings with braces, crowns, veneers? Well, let's talk about braces first. With braces, typically we're gonna ask the orthodontist to take the wire out of the teeth so that we can give our orthodontic patients a better cleaning. Sometimes it's not the case or the patient's unable to take the wire off and it makes the cleaning a little bit more difficult. But ideally, it's best to get the wire off so that we have more access with our tools to clean under the gums. If you have braces, I would strongly recommend you getting an electric toothbrush, a water pick, keeping everything super clean because I can't tell you how many patients I've seen where they take their braces off, we take the x-rays, and there's tons of cavities. So do the absolute best you can to keep everything clean during your braces journey. Of course, I do have a friend that has a braces channel that talks about orthodontics, and I'll leave the link above. Now with crowns and veneers, typically the hygienist is gonna do a lot of the same things that they would do on your natural teeth. But I would recommend letting your hygienist know that, hey, I have a couple veneers over here, or hey, I have an implant here, so that they have all the information they can to do the best cleaning for you. Okay, so what happens if you don't get your teeth cleaned regularly? If you don't get a professional cleaning done regularly, that buildup will continue to get worse and worse. And if it goes under the gums, it can cause gum disease, which can eventually lead to periodontal disease. You can get a lot of bone loss around the teeth. And in the most extreme cases, you can lose your tooth. Now, there are times that I see patients that are doing their job. Maybe they didn't go to a dentist for five years and their teeth are in really good shape and their gums are in really good shape. And that's definitely something that can happen if you take really good care of your teeth. But that's not everyone. There are people that come after five years where unfortunately I have to recommend getting a few teeth extracted or I have to recommend pocket reduction surgery, a gum surgery in order to get the gums back to health. So it's important to get those routine checkups so that things don't deteriorate into an unrestorable place, to a place where you have to lose a tooth or where you have to do major gum surgery. It's better to catch things early, just like catching a cavity early and doing a small filling versus when a cavity goes to the nerve and it needs a root canal or an extraction or things like that. So what about at home cleaning devices? What would I recommend to keep your teeth clean? Number one is that I'm gonna be recommending a soft bristle toothbrush. You can use a manual toothbrush. My wife's a dentist and she uses a manual toothbrush and her teeth are perfect. I personally prefer an Oral-B electric toothbrush. Once again, I'm not sponsored by them, but I like the small circular head. It forces my patients to go one tooth at a time and keep their teeth really clean. Um, I do have some videos talking about the proper way to brush your teeth, and I would definitely encourage you guys to go on the channel and check out those videos. My second recommendation is gonna be a water pick. A water pick uses pressurized water to remove the plaque that's stuck in between your teeth. It doesn't replace traditional string floss, but it's used as a supplement, and it's really powerful for people that have gum recession, where they have dark embrasures or a lot of space under their teeth, or if they have implants uh, and things like that. Number three is gonna be flossing, which a lot of people don't do. I definitely encourage you guys to floss in the morning and at night. Um, when you're looking to buy floss, there's thin floss, we call that glide floss. You can buy that, really good for tight contacts, for people that have really tight teeth. Uh, there's also thicker wax floss that you can get, and that's good for people that have spaces in between their teeth where they need a thicker floss to remove any 
food particles that get stuck in between the teeth. I have had questions about people that are buying those scalers off of Amazon, those sharp scalers. So personally, I don't recommend that. I think it's way easier to have a dental hygienist or doctor go around all surfaces of your teeth and make sure they're not poking your gums and removing all the buildup. If anyone has bought a hand scaler from Amazon, I would love to hear about it in the comment section down below. So feel free to leave a comment and share your experience. So what happens to your gums and teeth after a routine cleaning or a deep cleaning? Well, typically after routine cleaning, it's normal to feel maybe a little bit sensitive on your teeth because you have to imagine that any buildup that was removed that was covering the dentin or second layer of your tooth, that's removed, your tooth is exposed to the environment cold, hot, sweet, things like that, and you might have a little bit of sensitivity. Typically this resolves after a couple days or a couple of weeks. Now when you get a deep cleaning done, depending on the severity of the gum disease or periodontal disease, your gums are gonna be really swollen. After the cleaning's done, your gums will recede to a healthy level. And so it's normal to have gum recession after a deep cleaning. And when you have a deep cleaning, we're typically using a little bit more force, a little bit more leverage to make sure that the root surfaces are entirely clean. So it's also normal to feel a little bit more sensitivity than what you would feel for a routine cleaning. Typically I recommend warm salt water rinses to keep the site healthy. And at the periodontal maintenance visit, if we see that the gums have resolved and they're healthy, that's it. You just gotta keep it really clean. Sometimes after a deep cleaning, if the gums still aren't where they need to be, we might have to send you to a periodontist or gum specialist where they can do a variety of different things like pocket reduction surgery, where they create a flap, where they can visualize the buildup and clean it there, or other things like that. Number eight, how can we make the hygiene visit more comfortable? So I know a lot of people have dental phobia when they visit the dentist or they get their cleanings done. So some of the things that you can do is, number one, if your dentist doesn't have sunglasses to provide for you, bring your own pair of sunglasses so that you don't have to look at the bright light when you're getting your cleaning done. Number two is that there's a lot of loud noises when you get your cleaning done. The scaling noise can be a little bit freaky, hearing the dentist talk can be a little bit annoying, things like that. So if you want to, you can bring your headphones, put some of your music on, and that's how I get my cleanings done because I don't wanna hear that noise. And I feel like not enough patients are bringing their headphones or some music to listen to to just make the visit a little bit more comfortable. And there are sedation options like getting nitrous oxide, laughing gas, or getting Valium before a dental appointment. I don't think that's necessary for a cleaning. I think it's a little bit too much. So I would definitely encourage you guys to use more natural remedies to calm yourself down before the dental visit, maybe doing meditation, yoga, or whatever it is you do to calm your nerves and to make the appointment a little bit more enjoyable. How do I keep my teeth white in between dental cleaning appointments? So a lot of you guys, after you get your dental cleaning done, you look in the mirror and you see that your teeth are bright white and that's an awesome feeling to have. And you wanna keep that white teeth, especially now that we have our mask off and we're showing our smiles off. Um, so how do we keep our teeth white in between dental visits and how do we do it naturally? So the most important thing that you can do is drink a lot of water. When you're drinking water, you're rinsing any of that debris that gets stuck on your teeth. You wanna avoid any of these natural stainers coffee, red wine, blueberries, blackberries, tea, um, curry, foods with dark pigments in it. These things are gonna stain your teeth. If you're an iced coffee drinker, consider using a reusable straw to bypass your teeth and, and so that your teeth don't get stained. And at the end of the day, just being really consistent with brushing and flossing in the morning and at night. By doing a little bit of whitening, that can make a big difference in your smile. Um, so consider that option as well. And the last question I get a lot is about the cost of a deep cleaning or the price of a routine cleaning or basically just get an idea of what the prices are out there. So all it's hard for me to give an accurate representation of the cost because it varies depending on where you are located, what type of insurance you have, whether you're doing any laser surgery or any advanced treatment. All right guys, that was a lot of information. And if you stay till the end, I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, if you like the content, I would appreciate a nice thumbs up on the video. Share this content with someone who is maybe a little bit afraid to take on that cleaning journey, to take care of their teeth. Um, because I believe that the more information that you guys have, the more education that you have, less fear you'll have when you're at your dentist. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video and supporting the channel. It's definitely been a journey and I can't wait to make the next video. Thank you.